Welcome along to another On Road Podcast uh, video. Today I am going to be covering the topic of Ackerman steering. Now the reason why I laugh is because this is a, uh, I think it's a bit of a hot potato when it comes to uh, to racers and their understanding. <clears throat> Doing some research uh, through various sources, um, it's been really quite enlightening. So uh, let's get started. What is Ackerman? Well, uh, we've got our car on the left hand side you can tell that there's a thicker axle on the back than there is on the front uh, and this car's got to get around this bend and I think it's really important that we understand that uh, the inside of the bend is uh, has a smaller radius than the outside of the bend and so uh, when these front wheels uh, turn our car around the bend the inside wheel is traveling a shorter distance than the outside wheel. So this inside radius, as I say, is smaller than the outside radius, and therefore the inside wheel travels a shorter distance uh, than the uh, outside wheel. And of course, the uh, turning circle is, is much smaller, therefore, on the inside radius. Because of that, uh, we need to appreciate that the uh, point of rotation of the car uh, comes from the back axle. Uh, and this is uh, signified by the uh, red dot. Uh, that's the point of rotation of the vehicle. And uh, Ackerman uh, is kind of worked out uh, depending on the type of bend you're going to uh, set up to, um, how the inside wheel and the outside wheel uh, the deviation or the difference between the inside wheel and the outside wheel uh, is preset by the steering geometry. Um, but it's this is a, a, a good way of visualising how Ackerman uh, has come about. So when we then start to think about the inside wheel and the outside wheel and that same bend, the point of rotation of the axle, the point of the uh, center of the arc of the of the bend all goes together to make this inside wheel turn more than the outside wheel now there are various types of ackerman um the the ackerman that we use on our uh lmp cars touring cars buggies uh, is what's known as pro ackerman and that's the inside wheel turns more than the outside wheel and you can see that on the uh, on the diagram here the pro Ackerman the inside wheel so if we're turning left the inside wheel is turning more than the outside wheel and then we turn right the inside wheel is turning more than the outside wheel now the middle Ackerman or the middle car uh, is called true Ackerman or anti Ackerman uh, there's some guys and girls say it's called uh, anti Ackerman, some people call it true Ackerman. Well, I've just used both references for ease, and this is with both wheels are turning the same. So you can see on the left hand side, the inside wheel is turning more than the outside wheel, the inside wheel is turning more than the outside wheel, and then on the next set, the wheels are turning the same both ways. And then we've got anti Ackerman, and this is uh, not something that I want to go too deep into, but this is more. Um, used in Formula One so I'm led to believe uh, the outside wheel actually turns more than the inside wheel and there's a few very a few reasons for that uh, bends are not as sharp speed is higher um, and a few other reasons as well slip angles etc so um, on the screen we have uh, the various types of Ackerman and and what actually sets uh, Ackerman is the uh, steering linkage uh, and the red dot here is uh, signifying where the linkage would be or need to be to create anti Ackerman the Formula One Ackerman if you like um, true Ackerman the steering linkage would be in line with the wheel and for pro Ackerman the linkage would be inside 
of the wheel, which is what we see on our toy cars. So they're the three variations that will set the different Ackermans that we saw on this page here. So the Pro Ackerman, Anti Ackerman, uh, or Pro Ackerman, True Ackerman, Anti Ackerman, those three different Ackermans will be set by these three points. And that's the relationship or that those three points will change the relationship the inside wheel turns to the outside wheel. Now, uh, the standard way that Pro Ackerman, the one that we're using on our cars, standard way to measure the Pro Ackerman is to go from the front axle, drawing a line from inside the wheel back to the center of the rear of the car, which you can see by these uh, two lines with the, with the yellow dots on that angle and so now we've got ourselves in a situation that set up like we see on our cars uh, when we're racing and you can see that the inside wheel is turning more than the outside wheel and that's pro Ackerman then we bring the steering linkage in line with the wheel when we turn to the left and turn to the right, the inside wheel and the outside wheel turn the same amounts. This is true Ackerman or anti Ackerman. Up to you to decide. Uh, again, I've had varying uh, beliefs on, on what this is uh, referred to. And then anti Ackerman, the one that I referenced to being more in Formula One cars, is the linkage is now. Uh, almost in the wheel as you can see by the red dot the outside wheel is now turning more than the inside wheel so these are the three types of uh, Ackermans and the steering linkage is what will determine how much a wheel turns more or less than the other wheel with you know, that that's that's changing the amount they turn in terms of each other so there we are there's there's the three different Ackermans and they're the three different linkages that tie in with that Ackerman change so one of the uh, options that we have when we use our cars is that we're allowed to or we can move the servo loca location we can move it forwards and we can move it backwards and what this allows us to do is change the various uh, amounts of turn the wheels have for the amount of servo lock we have so if you turn uh, the wheels with uh, the servo in its usual position in the red position let's say you can see the red wheels are signifying that servo location. If you move the servo further forwards towards the front of the car, you'll actually have less turn for your money, if you like. But the Ackerman angle won't change. The, 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 the amount of turn the wheel has with each other won't have changed because you haven't changed the linkage point. You've only moved the servo. If we now move the servo into the green position, you'll actually get more lock than you did when it was in the red position or the white position, which you can see by the green wheels. The, the servos are moving the same amount, but the wheels are turning different amounts because of the angle of the steering linkage to the servo saver. Hope that makes sense. So you can see its effect there. To get differing amounts of Ackerman relative to the amount your servo turns in the same position, you would need to have different linkage points, which is what this was pointing at. So the white line is the original angle. And this would be 
the angle from where your ball joint and your turnbuckle link relative to the uh, kingpin. The red line makes more of an angle, which will give you more deviation between the outside wheel and the inside wheel. The yellow point will give you even greater deviation between the inside wheel and the outside wheel. So therefore, in this uh, presentation, on the right hand side, that wheel is going to keep doing its thing. But for the amount of turn, the inside wheel is either going to turn more or less depending on the linkage. So you can see on the green linkage, excuse me, on the green linkage, when you turn the wheels to the left, the green wheel is turning more, i.e. there is a bigger difference between the inside wheel and the outside wheel because of the, the linkage, because of the angle of the linkage. The servo is moving the same amount for all of these turns, but the inside wheel is moving at a different rate. So hopefully that gives you a nice clear understanding of what if you were able to change the angle your turnbuckle and ball joint could be at relative to the kingpin, that would change the deviation of the inside wheel to the outside wheel. And that's why some cars have different angles to others. It's important to understand that Ackerman steering is not linear. So what we've got on the screen here is we've got our Pro Ackerman on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, we've got a graph. Um, and so on the bottom, it's the inside wheel in degrees of turn. On the left hand side is the difference the outside wheel turns in relation to the inside wheel. So when I turn the inside wheel five degrees, so the right hand wheel in this case, the outside wheel at five degrees, there is no change. Again, this is, this is a generalization, but this is how it works. The outside wheel is turning at the same rate as the inside wheel. Then I'm gonna move the wheel to 20 degrees. Now the outside wheel has only turned 17 degrees. Then I turn the wheel to 25 degrees. The inside, the inside wheels turned five degrees, but the outside wheels only turned another two degrees. It had turned at the same rate, five degrees, five degrees. Then it went 20 degrees, 17 degrees. Then it went 25, 19 degrees. Now it's gonna go from 25 to 30 degrees, but the outside wheel only turned one degree. Now again, these rates are, this is a an example of how Ackerman works and it's just giving you an overall uh, understanding. And I'm always keen to learn if I've got any of this wrong, please pull me up on it, put it in the comments box below, but I'm just trying to get better at this stuff uh, as we all are. Um, but hopefully that gives you a good understanding of the amount of steering lock that you have will change the amount of differential between the inside wheel and the outside wheel. Now, because our steering rack is not just working on one plane, it's actually changing planes. And if you saw my bump steer video, it has a little bit of that application in here because all of a sudden, now when the steering uh, has, the, the servo has turned, you can see that the white arrow has actually lowered in plane, which will have actually caused more bump steer when you've turned. So it will have had an impact on, on the, the amount of turn, the Ackerman angle as well. So that's something to bear in mind because there are different, uh, uh, servo savers out there that offer differing values of uh, uh, bump steer, bump toe, and uh, Ackerman. 
So static toe will also in, um, influence your Ackerman as well. Static toe out increases Ackerman, static toe in decreases Ackerman. Remember, it's not changing the relationship. The inside wheel turns to the outside wheel. They are moving proportionately, but you will have either more or less Ackerman. This is all uh, taken into account where if there was no slip angles. Now, um, this is something that I want to <clears throat> do a video on as well, tyres, slip angles, grip levels, because I think this is vastly misunderstood when we're making changes to our cars and uh, how we read what our car is doing on track, which I think is a really huge component of getting better at, at anticipating the evolution of the track, anticipating what changes you need to make, and anticipating what that will feel like when you put the car down on the track. <clears throat> and so the cycle goes on. So slip angles are the difference between the, the direction that the wheel points and the direction the wheels travel. So the green arrows, so we're turning left obviously, we've got Pro Ackerman on, the inside um, wheel has turned more than the outside. The green line is where the wheel is actually pointing, but because of the slip angle, the the red arrow is the actual direction that the car is traveling in. And the gap between the two, well, on, on cars, they're looking for between three, four, five degrees of slip angle. Uh, and of course, this all comes down to, therefore, uh, the, uh, the grip uh, profile that is on the uh, graph in the middle of the two wheels. You've got the grip level going up, and then you've got the grip tire grip profile uh, going to the right which is uh, uh, the time and so the two vertical lines you're looking to make your tire behave or be at its optimal uh, in that uh, that avenue there to give you the best performance in your tire that's something that needs to be taken into account when you're working out how much Ackerman you need to be running or what you're looking for uh, in those Ackerman angles again I'm not saying that I know all of this stuff, and I'm sure I've probably made a couple of boo-boos along the way. I hope I haven't, but maybe people will look at it and, and question me on it, and you know, feel free to do so. But I think in, in summary, Ackerman <coughs> is quite a big topic and, and misunderstood. I know I've misunderstood it, and, and fortunately this lockdown has given me an opportunity to do a bit more research on this stuff. So it, it, there's a whole range of... Uh, options to open to you to understand uh, what Ackerman does, how you change Ackerman, uh, what Ackerman actually is, um, and the uh, the ingredients that will uh, have either a positive or ne negative effect on your steering. So that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, hopefully uh, I've given you something to think about. Watch the video back. If you liked it, share it with your friends, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, it's been great to have you along once again and I uh, hope you're all staying well out there and I'll see you all again trackside soon. Bye for now.